So my dad and I thought it'd be cool to fix up his 70 Roadrunner and drive it from Kansas City, Missouri to Louisville, Kentucky. Roughly about a seven and a half hour trip or 500 miles with no air conditioning and getting about 12 miles to the gallon. And of course, right before we left, a puff of smoke came from the dash and the car wouldn't start, scaring the hell out of both of us. We figured we'd shorted one of the gauges leading to both of the problems, hopefully. And at this point, we put so much time in the car, we took a gamble and hit the road. On the road, we found out that one of the gas seals for the tank was bad, leading us to only put about seven gallons in the tank at a time and stop every hundred miles, turning our trip into a nine hour car ride. Fortunately, we ran into some rain, which kept us cool, and we honestly had a really good ride. It was a long and fun ride with plenty of waving, honking horns, thumbs up, and when we arrived in Louisville around midnight, we grabbed some beers with my dad's old friends and hit the hay. He's a pretty stealthy dude. You can. So the morning of the first day, we woke up early, got registered, and started working our way through the thousands, hit thousands and thousands of cars at the NHRA Nationals. I'm not joking, there was over 11,000 cars at this event. It was the biggest car show I've ever seen. And they had everything. Gassers, American muscle, old trucks, rat rods, you name it, it was there. So after walking probably over 10 miles on day one, we got some food, some sleep, and hit it again day two. It looked like the whole city had stepped back in time. Everywhere you went, there was hot rods. We walked all day, all weekend, and I'm still positive we missed cars. I mean, look at this. This is one of the grass fields behind the event center, completely full. Not the event center, which was also full. Not the concrete parking lot out front, which was also full. The grass field behind the event center. Like I said, there was thousands of cars at this event. So we parked the car, started walking again, and this is what stood out on day two. As you know, all good things must come to an end. So on the morning of day three, we started our long, hot trek home. Still stopping every hundred miles or so, careful not to overfill our leaky gas tank. 
and I'd be lying if I told you it wasn't absolutely miserable. Traveling cross country in the dead of August heat in a non-air conditioned vehicle while the asphalt blows hot air in your face can get pretty hardcore. But I wouldn't have done it with anyone else.